Hey guys, welcome back to my white tent. This is where I work on stuff outside so I don't have to breathe fumes and all that. Um, we're on my bench, it's pretty awesome. And I got something to show you today and it's not the dog hair on my shirt, so no comments about that crap, all right? But it is also white and it's a set of rubber C-3PO shorts, finally. I've only been working on shorts for like over, over a year, slowly, slowly but surely. Um, and here is my first set of urethane rubber C-3PO shorts. And they came out quite good. Uh, they're not perfect, but this is my first attempt and the material is new to me. So it's a little bit of a learning curve. So the material that I'm using is called Simpact 85A High Impact Urethane Rubber by smooth on and this is um uh what is it a mix of uh 85 part a to 100 part b by weight so you got to weigh it on a little scale and everything and i've never really worked with this stuff before so i did some tests i made some c3po shoes well they're really just the caps of the shoes uh, eventually i will be making full shoes too out of this rubber i've got a good plan for this i'm going to do it in an upcoming video um but set of urethane rubber foot caps and they are really really uh good the consistency is really good for the the thickness to flexibility is very good on these so i'm, I'm excited about that uh but anyway put the shoes down for now and i'll do another video on shoes soon and i'll probably also do a set of hands uh in the next week or so because this stuff is really cool um but again this is an, this is an experiment so uh, I'm doing tests. I don't uh, know exactly my best method of application yet. So for this one, what I did was four coats, um, all the same thickness or all the same amount of resin. And I did one coat to kind of like brush all the surfaces. And then I sort of worked it on the front, another coat to brush all the surfaces and I worked it toward the back. And then I just did two more general coats on the inside. Um, and it worked pretty well. And uh, for the most part, it went on nice and even. It's a little tiny bit thicker here in the front, barely, barely. Like if you look at it with light behind it and you can see through, um, it's almost completely uniform. But the littlest extra bit of thickness changes the, um, the flexibility in a good way. Like I, I wish the top was a tiny bit thicker. It's a little too flexible up here. Um, got a couple options for how to remedy that. But uh, one thing to note about this resin is that um, I waited a little bit too long for the final coating and and by a little bit too long I mean, maybe like five ten minutes tops like I went and did something inside and came back out and applied the last coat and On the inside there's some little like bumpities around here And I thought that was just dots from when I rotocast the part You know, I was kind of like hand slushing the part in the mold and it would drip and I saw the little bumps and I thought they were drips but after it all cured, I realized they were tiny little air bubbles. They don't show up on the surface anywhere important, but on the inside, they are like look like little chicken pock marks. Um, and it's just spots where the last layer of resin didn't bond with the previous layers. So you have to work sort of quickly. I got a couple of spots on the sides right here on both legs that are the result of that same thing, where there's just a little bit of delamination on the last layer. So it's fine and the parts that you can see on the outside get covered by the legs anyway So it doesn't really matter for this pair again just a test But um, so if you work with this be sure that you're working quickly between layers So as soon as one layer just starts to set up you need to start the next layer I think for future versions. I'm gonna do two layers. I'll do you know same same exact amount I think the amount I did was correct, but I need to do um, instead of four batches just do it in two batches and then really just keep brushing around and then um, for future versions I may do a, a little bit of a, either fabric or some kind of like chopped cloth inlay inside just to help the rubber uh, grab to the surface a little more evenly and also it will you know help prevent tears I don't think the stuff's gonna tear very easily it feels pretty strong but uh, yeah, I think that'll be maybe a little helpful just to keep a little thickness in the rubber toward the top. But I feel like the amount that I used is is good. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I got to make about three more sets for myself because I've got um, my current 3PO, my new 3PO, 
RE7 droid and uh, another backup set. So I, all of them I'm going to experiment and uh, I think I'm going to be able to get these pretty figured out by the time I'm done with those. So if you're interested in a set of rubber C-3PO shorts, let me know and um, I can try to work something out. Maybe I can do a, some kind of good deal on these initial versions until I work it out if you guys are interested. So um, anyway, thanks for stopping by. I'll be back soon with some more stuff and uh, I need to make a video updating you guys on where I'm at with the Don Post uh, 3D files that I'm working on because I've been doing a ton of work on them but they're not done and I'm discovering things along the way. I feel like you guys just need an update. I haven't talked about that in ages. So I will probably either today or tomorrow make a video on that. So uh, be on the lookout. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you back soon. If you like these videos, give me a subscription. A subscription? Please subscribe. I never say that before, so I think I'm going to start for this year. Subscribe if you like. If you like. I don't know. It feels so weird. 600 f videos or something? I've never said that before. Meh. feels stupid. Alright, I'm out of here. Later, guys.